My name is FishnetTX. I run a small channel here on YouTube that mainly focuses on bass fishing. I am absolutely obsessed with fishing. Ever since I was a little kid, I have absolutely loved it. It is one of my favorite things in the entire world to do. So this story takes place at the beginning of August to this past summer and my family and I were down in Crystal Beach, Texas. My family and I were down there visiting some family friends and I was just doing what I always do, a bunch of fishing. Started off the first day doing some redfish and speckled trout fishing. If you saw my last video, you probably would have seen that. And then I was down there just doing some surf fishing as I always do, having some pretty decent success. Didn't catch anything huge, but I was catching a bunch of um, spot, croaker, whiting, you know, the usual stuff you kind of find in the surf. Some catfish too, you know, catfish are no fun, but was catching a few of those guys. I also tried doing some flats fishing and I just did not fish it at the right times. I only fished the flats when the tide was down. And I learned pretty quickly that's not when you're supposed to be fishing them because when the tide's down, you know, most of the flats are exposed and there's no fish there. So what I ended up doing was I went to a nearby jetty and I caught a bunch of croaker and then a little cutlass, Atlantic cutlass ribbon fish, which was pretty cool. I've never caught one before. I was trying to catch some redfish and trout off the jetty there and I ended up catching that thing. So that was, that was pretty cool. But I was catching a bunch of croaker and the reason for that was I was catching these guys and then I was saving them for the next day to use as shark bait off the beach. And this beach was was perfectly set up for shark fishing and my one of my original plans on the trip was to try and catch a shark off the beach and this beach could not have been more perfect the way the sandbar aligned with the beach and everything made it so perfect so what you had was you had the beach and then you had about 30 yards out you had to walk for a little gut that went up to about your neck or so so not too too deep I mean obviously I was still at least able to stand there and then I'll get to the sandbar which was about the beginning of the sandbar for about 40 yards offshore and then I could walk probably about a hundred yards um, off the shore on that sandbar if the water literally only only up to my ankles and I was able to cast out into some way deeper water where a bunch of sharks were lying and it was so set up perfectly and I had the croaker for bait and it was just it was perfect for trying to catch some sharks off the beach. So this now leads us to the second to last day of the trip and what would eventually be my final morning. I got up super early that morning around 5.30 because I knew this was gonna be my best chance I had all summer to catch a shark off the beach. I had the right bait, I was in the right spot. I knew if the conditions were good, which they were, things were going to happen. So I got out there and dug a little hole in the sand for my rod tube and then it made my first run out in the morning and nothing special happened on this one. I think some catfish may have chewed at the bait but unfortunately we did not get any Anything. So then after that, made my second run out and clumsily enough, I did not hook on the bait well enough and I chucked it off. You've got it. With me. right as I was casting it so that was really unfortunate had to go back to the beach and put a new bait on there and then I casted that one out had to wait about 30 minutes or so and while I was doing that I was just fishing the first gut in between the sandbar and the beach and I was catching some good fish actually I was catching some more croaker which I was using for bait and I was catching some whiting a few catfish we didn't include those but I was having a really good time and then I finally got a solid bite this wasn't the kind of bite where the reel started screaming you know and drag was getting pulled this was the kind of bite where all the tension on the line was released and I knew a fish was on there so I got ready got set I started reeling and nothing and I was so confused I reeled it back in and my entire bait had been chewed apart except for the head and there were big shark teeth marks in it so I knew I had been bit by a shark I was in the right spot using the right bait sharks in the area it's go time guys I knew I was so close the closest I've ever been to catching a shark from the beach so I put on this new little piece of croaker that I had just caught and I headed out to the sandbar and now I'm a strong believer in faith I believe that everything happens for a reason this might be one of the craziest audio bits I've ever captured on camera moments before disaster strikes I talk about my fears and what I don't fear about fishing in the surf. Definitely a little freaky walking out here though, now knowing that, I mean, I just cast the bait out here not too long ago. They got bit by a shark, <laughs> knowing that there are sharks all around me. There always are though, when you're out here. To be honest though, guys, I'm probably more scared of stingrays than I am sharks. Stingrays scare the crap out of me. That's why I always shuffle my feet when walking out here. As much as being bit by a shark would be absolutely horrible. You have a very, 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 very low chance of that ever happening. Stingray, on the other hand, you know, you can step on one anytime and that's, some pretty extreme poison, you know. So. 
it was just crazy. It was like it was meant to happen. I almost you know, I cursed myself or jinxed myself. I don't know. So after taking that cast, I started heading back towards the beach. And something people always tell you when you're saltwater fishing, especially off the beach, is always shuffle your feet, no matter what. When you shuffle your feet, it scares off stingrays. Something that I'm normally really good at doing. I guess this one time, I just got a little lazy. Just got a little lazy. And sometimes getting a little lazy that'll get you. So I start making my way off the sandbar. I take my first step off it into the divot. And I just feel this hard, sharp, crunchy feeling go into my foot and I immediately jump. And I scream and yell and I was like, oh my God, what was that? And from the crunchiness of the feeling, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a crab or something at first. I was like, all right, I'm, I guess I'm okay. Jeez, that hurt a lot though. So I start walking back towards the beach, turn the camera on again, trying to talk to it, but the camera had been in water, so it wasn't really working, but I was in a daze at this point. My foot was absolutely throbbing as I was starting to come out of the water. And it was just the strangest feeling. And I was thinking in the back of my brain, did I really just step on a stingray? There's no way I had to have gotten pinched by a crab real badly because it's happened to me before. I've been pinched really badly in the past off this same beach even to the point to where I'm bleeding but this time it just felt different this time it didn't feel like a pinch it felt more like a penetration but I still felt that crunchiness of a crab so I thought I maybe stepped on a crab shell and that it really wasn't that bad it just hurt a little bit but as soon as I got back to the beach and put my rod in the holder I looked down and my foot is starting to gush blood and at this point I know in the back of my brain I just got stung by a stingray. So immediately after seeing this, I sit down to stop the blood from rushing to my foot. And in the back of my brain, I know I just got stung by a stingray, but I'm trying to keep myself calm. And I don't know if anyone else does this, but I was just trying to tell myself, oh, you just stepped on a crab, you're okay. You can even hear me talking to the camera. I just stepped on a crab, guys, I'm fine. All right, guys, so we got the wound cleaned up right now. We can see it. What looks like it happened was, I think I, I did step on a crab because it, it, it felt crunchy, you know? But I knew the entire time that it was more than just stepping on a crab. When you step on a crab, it does not bleed the way that my wound was bleeding. So I try to keep myself calm by telling myself that you just stepped on a crab, you're okay. What I ended up learning later was that I stepped directly on the bar with the stingray. That's why I never actually felt the fish. I only felt the sharp crunchiness of that barb. I stepped right on it, which luckily for me, the barb did not get stuck in my foot. And that may have been the main reason why I didn't step on the body to where he had time to maneuver and get his barb stuck right into my foot. I literally stepped right on it. And luckily enough, I didn't break it off. So it may have been actually the best case scenario for me stepping right on the barb. So I called my dad calmly on the phone, told him, hey, I may have been stung by a stingray. He got down there, helped me clean it up. I went back up to the house and after washing off the cut and looking at it further, I had no doubt in my mind that this was a stingray wound. Looked up stingray wounds on Google and my little cut that I had matched the description perfectly. As much as I love small little communities like Crystal Beach, Texas, these small little beach towns, a lot of times they don't have full-time ER clinics. And in this case, Crystal Beach only had one and it wasn't even open on the day I got stung. So my dad and I had to do some quick thinking and we realized the quickest way for me to get to the ER would be by taking the ferry. So my dad and I set out to get in line for the ferry and it was just miserable. We had to wait two hours to get across into the nearest big city, which was Galveston. And that was was a miserable two hours. I had to keep my foot up to stop it from bleeding and just the intense pain of all the venom in my foot going along with all the throbbing and the blood and everything was just ridiculous and some of the worst pain I've ever experienced in my entire life. So once my dad and I finally got to the ER, I had to have to hobble my way in as I couldn't put any pressure on my foot at all. And if I put my foot down, if I didn't keep it up, it would start literally just gushing blood everywhere. So I had to hobble my way in to the ER where we learned that the wait was going to be about three hours to see the soonest doctor because because of COVID-19 protocols and that was just terrible. So after having to wait two hours on the ferry, I had to wait another three hours to finally get some service at the ER. But after a long wait and long last, I finally did get my cut cleaned up and it was a long day, a lot of cleaning. We had to get an x-ray on it to make sure that the, the barb tip was not stuck in there. Absolutely miserable. It had been about eight hours at this point. It was all sealed up though and I was ready to head home. So in order to get out of the ER, I had to put my shoe on because I was on crutches. So I didn't want my foot, you know, my bare foot touching the ground. So I looked down at my foot as I'm leaving and my entire shoe in Adidas Ultra Boost was filled 
to the rim and blood. So after seeing how bad it was bleeding, I had to call over another nurse. I had to go back into the ER room again. And this time we had to get it to stop bleeding. And it was just bleeding uncontrollably. No matter how much pressure the nurses put on it, it was just bleeding so, so much. They had to put some of the hardest pressure I'd ever felt in my life on my foot while it's gushing out blood and while it's throbbing from the venom. And that pain and all that craziness almost made me pass out as it was just almost uncomprehendable. I just could not stand the pain much longer. They finally started getting it sealed up. And when they did, they pressed it wrong and they literally sprayed the entire wall of the ER room with blood everywhere. I mean, just a miserable, bloody experience that I never wish to relive, but they finally had it sealed up well and bandaged and I was able to go home. After this crazy experience, I was on crutches for over a week and then I was not able to walk or do anything right for about two weeks after that. So it was about a three week recovery process and I was in a lot of pain during that time as I had a big deep gash in my foot. It was absolutely miserable. It's a few months later now, so I'm I'm doing much, much better, but it's surely an experience I would never like to live again.